And we're back. Bringing it to you live from 6969 Studios. I'm just kidding. It's called Missing Studio. Everything's missing. It's missing TV, missing soundbar, missing phone. It's cool. It comes from Missing No uh, in Pokemon Blue. If any of y'all fucks remember, there used to be like a... Uh, well, my friend said he was the one who made the glitch. I don't think that's true. But uh, he showed me how to do it. We'd just do some kind of weird walking and shit. And you catch this fucking glitch Pokemon. They're like, I don't know if it was really designed by the game or what. But it was in every one of the games. It was fucking crazy looking. And it would er sometimes it would fucking erase your whole game. And like fuck up all your shit. Like if it didn't erase your game, it's it was horrible what it did after all that work. And you could only get to it like at the end or like close to the end of the game. So yeah, that fucking thing uh, was cool as hell. So it was called Missing No. Uh, like as in number with a dot fucking so yeah that's what my studio and shit is <clears throat> my name uh, stage name I want to go by I call it a pen name though uh, is anti because it's like kind of like anti-evil it's kind of that kind of vibe I feel like um, paradox you know everything every every action has an equal and opposite reaction and I think that like that's probably the the most godly thing a human has ever come up with or written. That's Uno the Clown rapping right there. He's cool as fuck, dude. I ain't never seen somebody <clears throat> with, well, okay, I don't know a whole bunch of people who only got one leg, right? Dude's only got one leg, but he fucking come to work at this restaurant I was working at when I was the manager there. And this motherfucker... Is the only person I've ever seen besides me that could run the kitchen by himself and, and do good enough that I would call it running the kitchen. Uh, he fucking murdered it, dude. On his, like, second or third day, I don't fucking understand it. But I was glad as hell, though. But beyond that, that's the coolest motherfucker I've met, dude, in a long time. Like, he's, like, I don't know. I feel like we have a lot in common just the way we, like, the way we handled the problems we went through in life. Obviously, we had different problems. Um, I don't think I had like it that bad, really. But I think I, I think I just push it back and like always have done that. Almost like there's repressed emotions and suppressed emotions. So I think that probably whichever one means that you don't even realize you're doing it. <laughs> I've probably done that my whole life. So there's probably some shit that I could work out or something. But that's just. Fuck that, I, I don't have time for that, I don't care, either. anyway, like, fuck it, what's the matter, I let go of the past, dude, let go of it, because it's gone, even what I just said doesn't exist anymore, it literally doesn't exist, it's unvisitable, you cannot, you'll never be there again. But don't get me started talking about time. You know, we don't even really have, a, like, a real definition for what it is. Time. Think about it. What is it? Somebody will say, my wife, okay, like a normal person, she says, well, it's the seconds and minutes and hours. And I'm like, no, that's just a measure of time. Like, what is time? You don't know what it is. Uh, no idea what it is. And it's just, a, I don't know, Albert Einstein, I think, kind of just come up with that it's another dimension. So you got, like, do 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 and then, like, so time is just another version of move. I don't understand it, and I never will, and neither will you. But it's cool as hell to think about multiple dimensions for sure. Um, like I think string theory. I read a book on it a long time ago. I'm not gonna act like I do like all kinds of reading on physics, but I do love it. But I read a book a long time ago, and it said that um, it's called the little book on string theory is what it's called. But it says something about, like, um, string theory models predict that there should be, like, 12 dimensions. So, I think, like, the next dimension up from, from where you live, so we're three-dimensional, really four, but we don't understand the fourth, so I would say three. So, like, the fourth is hard for us to understand, five is impossible. And it's the same way if you go down, really, if you think about it. Um, I was telling her, you, if you got, okay, a three-dimensional being, okay, now you got take it down once so you're to a 2d being things that can't walk around each other you know you've all heard that shit because there's no around it's only this way and this way and fucking um we can kind of comprehend that but not really i mean we can't imagine an infinite anything or a zero anything so 
Um, it would be infinitely thin, you know, if he was to turn it, it wouldn't exist anymore. So, no, we can't imagine that. And then to try to imagine a point, how are you going to do that? Like, you, it's try to imagine a point, you're just, like, continuously searching to try to imagine a smaller thing. That's not a point. A point is infinitesimally small. So it's amazing how much shit we don't know. That's one thing I guess I would want to talk about. Like, kind of the thing I want to kind of bring to bear with my music. I want people to, I don't know if the word is be humbled or just be scientific about it or think. Just just stop thinking that you're the center of anything. You're not. There's no center and it's damn sure not you or anything that you could guess. Like, and I don't mean like, the center of the universe in space or anything. I just mean that there is... Out of... Say say all of humankind throughout all history, we have only learned a hundred things. Say that, okay? So all of knowledge and college and everything, a hundred things. Okay, I think we might know, like, maybe one of those things to be true. Maybe. Um, and could, you know, prove it. And even if you can prove something to be true, if our fucking viewpoint is flawed... Which, if that's po okay, so imagine that it's possible that we have a skewed viewpoint. Uh, um, we don't observe things in the way that, say, God would observe them, the Creator would observe them, and I guess that would be the one that you would consider the most accurate, right? So, if we have a flawed viewpoint, then even if we can prove something to be true by the way our simple brain understands it, um, then even that still may not even be right. We may not understand anything. Um, I don't know. I just. It blows my mind sometimes when people say something like, it's a fact, like, motherfucker, <laughs> shut up, it's arrogant as hell. I mean, I'm an arrogant motherfucker too, so for me to have a problem with that, it's an issue. But you're like besmirching science. I don't see any reason why a scientist and a Christian would argue. Or, well, I mean, really any other religion, but I just don't. I'm a Christian, and that's what I believe is, is right, and that's for everybody. I don't believe that it's right just for me. Um, so I don't mean it like that, but... For me, science answers how, and religion answers why. Um, if you look back at all the theories that's ever been proposed, you'll see that that's a, a general statement, but it's true. Because, like, say the Big Bang, for instance, we have no idea that that really happened. Um, it makes sense because we see the universe is getting bigger. It, simplistically, it's, we see the universe getting bigger, so we assumed yesterday it was smaller. First of all, that's fucked up because how do you know that? It's You're talking about the expansion of space and time. How, how are you going to call that smaller? That don't make sense. And then to say that it, because it's getting smaller, it must have been at one point at some point in time. Uh, okay, that's also flawed, because how the fuck do you know that? If it's getting smaller, and it's still getting bigger, if it's getting smaller going back in time, then it could just have been getting smaller <laughs> forever, or whatever ever is. Uh, you know, so I don't know, it kind of makes sense, I don't have a better idea, but, uh, that would answer how it happened. If we was to discover that that was true, then we would know how it happened. We would not know why it happened. Still, we would not know why it happened. So for a scientist to kind of just jump across the lines there and say that, well, we know how it happened, so there's no God. That's not even a cause and effect. I don't understand that. Um, and then religion, you know, they some people, because mainly because religion was here first. Christianity was here first. So for the um, Christians to be calling uh, science the devil and everything like that it's probably because they uh are working for the devil most likely um and that doesn't mean that they necessarily know it or believe in him that would be the easiest way to trick somebody would be to have them not even think you really exist right because then it'd be pretty fucking easy to sneak up on them right i'm sure that happens a lot and it happens to me too i mean like you know, sometimes I'll be trying to remain faithful, uh, and then, like, if I don't pay attention, you know, the way my brain works, and the devil knows how my brain works, you know, I hear a voice or whatever and say, well, you know, it ain't real, you know, all that's not real anyway, like, you know, they just made up religion to give humans a sense of purpose or, you know, something that appeals uh, logically to me, but, you know, it's just like every other trial and anything you face in life, you've got to, uh, 
you got to turn that off and you got to say get thee behind me Satan in the name of Jesus Christ amen and then you're good to go I promise it works every time and um so what I was saying was though scientists um answer how and whatever you believe why it happened is a different question um so those two things to me when combined uh is basically how my brain functions um I like to look at things from at least, you know, every angle I can. And I like to get fucked up as hell, too, and look at it from way different points of view as well. These mushrooms lately. They're the shit, dude. Fucking. I'm obsessed with albino penis envy right now, though. I haven't grown those yet. That's the name of the mushroom, penis envy. Look it up. Um. So I've, I've had some of the regular ones, but I'm going to get some of the um, albino ones because that's all for um, mycological, mycological research under a microscope. So we're talking about examining the mushrooms. Uh, we're going to like take a microscopic journey, like a trip into the center of the um, interverse. And those things I've heard are... I don't have a word for it because it's obvious. <laughs> so I'm getting some of those. And we're going to stick them under the microscope and study them motherfuckers all night long. I'm going to become a famous... Uh, I'm going to start making a company. I'm going to build a company that produces glass slides for the cheapest microscope in the world. And I'm going to sell fucking... Uh, uh, <laughs> no, never mind. I won't say that. <laughs> All right, I gotta go piss. I'll be right back.